Hi everyone, this is Rick and in today's video I'm going to share with you 7 dividend stocks that pay me over $250 per month. I've been investing more and more into dividend paying stocks and ETFs lately because of the bear market and the fact that dividend paying companies have been able to be more stable, but also because I expect that in the next 10 years value companies, which are the ones that usually pay dividends, might outperform growth companies again. So before we get into the list, let me briefly explain why I believe the dividend paying value companies might outperform in the next 10 years and what you should avoid when looking for dividend stocks or dividend ETFs. The reason why I believe that value companies might outperform growth companies again in the next 10 years is that if you take the Russell 1000 indexes growth and value, which are the two most established indexes for growth and value companies, overall since 1979, they both grew with an average of 12% per year. But if you look at the single decades, you see that value and growth have taken turns outperforming and underperforming each other. And if this trend persists, the next decade should be the good one for value. So when you're looking for a dividend stock to buy, one thing that you need to be careful of is don't just look at the dividend yield. There are many companies that give 7, 8, sometimes over 10% dividend yield, but there is often a strong possibility that it's a so-called dividend trap. This can happen when they don't have a good management and they don't know how to use their money or because they want to make themselves more attractive to investors. But it's a fact that usually companies that pay high dividend yields are not going to be able to keep paying them for many years. As a rule of thumb, good stable companies are usually able to pay around 3% dividends. And if they're good, their stock price also grows in value over time. And that means that the 3% dividend you get also grows in value over time. All right, the first stock in my portfolio that pays dividends is Procter & Gamble, one of the largest value companies in the world per market cap. The company is almost 200 years old, and if you don't know what they sell, chances are you have many of their products at home, like Brown, Pantene, Gillette, or B, Pampers maybe if you have kids, and so many more. Procter & Gamble pays quarterly, and last year they paid 2.42% dividends, which means $242 for every $10,000 you have invested. 2.42% might not sound like a lot to you, but there are two important factors to consider. Number one, you're not gonna find another company that pays as consistently as Procter & Gamble. When I choose a company that pays dividends, one thing that I want is that the company has a long record of paying dividends, and also that they increase their dividend payments over time. Well, if you take all the value companies with over $10 million market cap, Procter & Gamble is the one that has been able to pay and increase dividends for the longest period of time, with a record of 66 consecutive years. And the second reason why 2.42% is a great dividend yield is that as opposed to other companies, Procter & Gamble has been growing at an average of 12.79% per year in the last 40 years. So even if you get 2.42% per year, you need to consider that this 2.42% actually delivers you more and more cash every year because the stock price grows. If you invested $10,000 in Procter & Gamble in 2010, you'd now have $36,436, with an average growth of 10.25% per year. So just by investing $10,000 in 2010, you now get $881 thanks to the 36,000 portfolio. So if I can give you a takeaway from this first stock, it's to research not only the dividend yields, but also the company growth, because the growth of the stock is also going to compound your dividend payments. The second stock in my portfolio is one of the biggest financial institutions in the world, JP Morgan Chase. JP Morgan delivered 2.83% dividends in the last 12 months. It means $283 yearly for every $10,000 of this stock that you possess. Again, we are close to 3% dividend yield. It's not like that 12% dividend yield that you get with JP, of which, by the way, I made a video two weeks ago, but good investments in value companies usually are going to give you around 3% dividend yield. Banks and financial companies are usually harder to evaluate from the financial statements because they have a lot of debt. So if you check, for example, the balance sheet of JP Morgan, you'll see that they have almost as much liabilities as assets. But this is normal for banks, and yes, it's true that JP Morgan has been suffering in 2022 like all companies, but it was probably one of the banks that better profited from the interest rate hikes of the last 14 months. In fact, they just reported their first quarter earnings and they beat expectation on both revenue and earnings. I usually don't invest much in banks and when it comes to dividend paying portfolio, I really value security because if you invest in a company that goes out of business, then you're not gonna get any dividends. But JP Morgan, for example, didn't go bankrupt in 2008 like some other financial institutions out there. And they are one of the more stable financial institutions in the world. All right, the third stock on my list is something we're all familiar with. It's PepsiCo. Here I could have mentioned Coca-Cola, for example, that I also possess, which is surely the leading competitor when it comes to the drink itself. But in my opinion, for a dividend investor, 
PepsiCo is slightly better. PepsiCo paid 2.49% in dividends last year, which means you'd get $249 per year if you had $10,000 invested in it. In comparison, Coca-Cola paid 2.8%, but despite that, there are some things to consider. First of all, if you compare these two companies, Coca-Cola is focused on drinks, while Pepsi also sells chips like Cheetos or Doritos. This might be seen as a disadvantage for Pepsi because they have more different products to deal with, but it's also a strong point because of diversification. But the biggest reason is the growth of the dividend yield and the total return. If you simply compare the last year's dividend yield of the two companies, Coca-Cola got 2.8% and PepsiCo 2.5%. So you'd go for Coca-Cola. But looking at PepsiCo and Coca-Cola over time, you notice that PepsiCo grew both in dividend per share and in stock price much more than Coca-Cola since 2000. And the number gets even more impressive if you look at the total return, which assumes the reinvestments of all the dividends. PepsiCo's total return since 2000 is a huge 760%, compared to just 280% for Coca-Cola. So if you bought PepsiCo instead of Coca-Cola, over time you'd have had a much higher return despite the lower dividend yield we have today. I also checked the total return from 1985 to today, and you can see here that Coca-Cola, which is the red line, kind of lost their competitive advantage around 1998 2000. In any case, both PepsiCo and Coca-Cola are strong companies, so I don't believe that they're going to disappear in the next 20 years, and the demand for their products is also not going anywhere. So they're surely a dividend stock that every investor should possess. All right, pick number four is kind of a controversial pick because I'm actually pro-renewable energies. And here we're talking about an oil and gas company, which is ExxonMobil. Not the greener option, and hopefully in the future we're gonna rely less and less on fossil fuels. But from a financial perspective, if you invested in Exxon in the last three years, you would have enjoyed a wonderful growth. And year to date, the company yielded 3.07% dividends. Another name that you've probably heard of is Chevron Corporation. Another oil and gas company, very similar to Exxon, also with a similar similar dividend yield of 3.38%. If you go back 10 years, or even if you go back 40 years, you're gonna see that Chevron had a higher growth overall. But unlike Chevron, Exxon has invested heavily in exploration and new production assets in recent years, and will continue to have benefits from those investments for a very long time. If you consider how the prices of oil and gas have increased in the last year, and the fact that we still don't know when the war in Ukraine will be over, energy prices will not come down to the old prices anytime soon. And I believe that companies like Exxon will continue to profit from these prices increases for a very long time. Now, I wouldn't suggest you to invest in ExxonMobil or in Chevron Corporation right now because Exxon, for example, grew roughly 300% from 2020 to today, in just two years. Clearly, this growth has been driven by the global energy crisis, but it's not sustainable in the long term. Still, you should keep an eye on the energy sector and in particular at ExxonMobil because it's true that we're shifting more and more to green solutions. But if you really think about the entire supply chain, oil is still used in almost everything from transportation to machines for agriculture and industry. And in the future, the lack of oil will also drive the price more and more up and this will partially compensate the scarcity. All right, the next stock on our list is a company founded by these three nice gentlemen in 1978. I'm talking about the largest home improvement retailer in North America, Home Depot, that probably all of you know and have been to if you need anything at all for your house. Home Depot is a great stock, a wonderful stable company with strong financials, and in the last 12 months delivered 2.62% dividends. They have been giving dividends for 21 consecutive years, and the stock itself has grown almost twice as much as the S&P 500, in the last 10 years. If you invested $10,000 in Home Depot exactly 10 years ago, you now have over $60,000, which is incredible. And those $60,000 would give you now $1,572 in dividends with the current yield. Home Depot has over 2,300 stores and made $157 billion in revenue in the past 12 months. And in terms of the revenue breakdown, nearly half of the revenue comes from professional contractors and the other half comes from private do-it-yourself customers, which is a good thing because the two segments kind of balance each other's. Profitability is also not an issue. Home Depot got a 33% gross margin and 15% operating margin. The earnings per share grew constantly in the last 10 years and it has solid returns on assets and return on invested capital of 23 and 36%. Considering that Home Depot, together with their competitor Lowe's, basically have a monopoly for home improvement in America, you can see assured that it will pay dividends for a very, very long time. Okay, the next stock in my portfolio is literally one of my favorites and just as Procter & Gamble, I'm pretty sure that you have a lot of their products at home. I'm talking about Johnson & Johnson, and if I had to list all the brands owned by this company, I would need a whole video. So instead, I'll just show you this picture, and you can stop the video and probably find at least 50 brands that you know. In particular, Johnson & Johnson deals in skincare products, pharmaceuticals, consumer goods and health, and even manufacturers' medical devices. With just a glance at the brand display, you can realize 
how much of the market is under the monopoly of Johnson & Johnson. This should usually reassure you about the stability of the company for the future. Johnson & Johnson is the second largest dividend paying company in the world after ExxonMobil, with a market capitalization of 424 billion and in the last 12 months gave a dividend yield of 2.78%. If you want another assurance about the dividends, Johnson & Johnson is what they call a dividend aristocrat, and actually a really good one, since they've been distributing and increasing dividends every single year for the last 60 years years, second only to the 66 years of Procter & Gamble. Add this to an annual growth of 11% in the last 10 years and you realize that this is a value company every investor should have in their portfolio. The company is pretty much immune to any economic downturns as you can see from the graph and this is because of the kind of products they sell and also because of the monopoly that the company created. The financial statements of this company are solid with growing revenue and stable margins in the income statement, as well as little shortened debt in the balance and a lot of shareholders Equity. Okay, our last and final stock is a company that you couldn't miss, and it's Epvi, a biopharmaceutical research and development company that ranks number six on the list of largest biomedical companies by revenue. They own a portfolio of drugs in different sectors, and their primary products are used to treat autoimmune diseases, but they also own more common products like Botox. The stock currently pays 3.59% dividend yield, which is higher than what we've seen so far and amounts to about $5.80 per share every single year. So if you don't know Epvi, you've probably seen a commercial about their first product though, which is called Humira. Humira is a drug to treat autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's disease, psoriasis, and this drug alone in 2022 accounted for 37% of the total revenue and has been the most financially successful drug ever in history with over 200 billion sold over the course of its life. Now, there is a negative point that you need to know. In February 2023, a copycat of Humira was developed and released by Amgen another big pharmaceutical company, so we need to observe what happens in the next few years because FV is expected to lose the monopoly on this treatment. On the bright side though, FV is also developing a drug for Parkinson's disease that could be a blockbuster drug in 2027 and is awaiting approval from the FDA, which is the Food and Drug Administration. FV is a solid company that invests a lot in research and development and it's true that Humira is their first product, but also other products make a big portion of the sales. Like Botox sold 5 billion in 2022 in Brovica, to treat cancer sold 4.5 billion, so they definitely diversified their product portfolio. Thanks to the high dividend yield of 3.59%, if you own 100 shares of Abby, you're gonna get $580 in dividends every single year which is really not bad. Before concluding the video, I'd like to give you a bonus dividend stock, which is actually an ETF, not a stock. I'm talking about VYM, the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF, which is one of my favorite dividend ETFs because of its strategy and low volatility. In the last 10 years, it's had an average appreciation of 10.15% per year and has a current dividend yield of 3.11%. So if you invested $10,000 10 years ago, you now have $26,298 and that would yield you today $818 yearly in free dividends. All the companies that I mentioned before in this video are included in this ETF. So you kind of get an all-in-one package of great dividend companies. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you know any other good companies that pay good dividends, let us know in the comment section below. And beside that, thank you so much for watching this video. I wish you a great day or evening. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.